Hello everyone, today we will talk about the base 16 setup for Verge 3D. I will tell you about how to get in Verge 3D the same result as in Blender viewport. Also we will learn about the texture types which are compatible with Verge 3D and about the options which will make your scene look correctly in a web browser. Well, first of all, let's create a new scene and select our Verge 3D engine. And now on the right side you can see the Verge 2D options, before there were Blender render options. Ok, first we'll talk about how to get the same render result in Verge 2D in web browser and in Blender viewport. First of all, we need to enable a wall space shading checkmark under the shading tab. You need that to make Blender to work with normals the same way the Verge 3D does. Then we need to go to the viewport settings. Here we need to activate the wall background checkmark. So we can see now in Blender our vault setup. For the next step we need to move to the shading section and change multi texture to GLSL. And then in the viewport shading setup we need to select material. That way the shaders in the viewports will look exactly like they meant to be when you set them up in material tab. And now let's try exporting the scene, just so we can see that it looks exactly like in the viewport. And yep, the cube looks exactly the same. Ok, and now let's talk about the options in the Verge 3D scene setup. The checkbox Bake Modifiers applies all of the modifiers on all of the objects right before the exports into the engine. For example, if I add a subdivision surface modifier to the cube and export it to the engine, you can see that in the engine we see the original. But if I activate the Bake Modifier checkbox, in the engine we also see the subdivided cube. The modifier has been applied and now it looks like in Blender. Ok, let's delete the modifier. The next checkbox is Bake Armature Actions. Natively, Verge 3D supports only forward kinematics. So, if in your animation you are using some constraints, for example inverse kinematics, you need to set this checkbox on. Of course, you can manually bake your animation using Blender standard features, but this option will do everything for you. And the next checkbox is Enable Shadows. As you can say from its name, it enables shadows in your Verge 3 scene. So, let's add the plane to our scene and set the material of it the same as on a cube. Now we need to set our light source as a sun. Ok, now let's activate the Enable Shadows checkbox and export it to the engine. Yes, the shadows are now working in the engine. Ok, now let's talk about the elements that are necessary for the correct scene visualization in the engine. These elements are already on the scene and first of all, it is a camera. In Verge 3D, the camera can be different types. First of all, it is the orbit camera. The orbit camera will orbit around the center that you can set in a target section. Let's try the export and as you can see the camera is rotating around the center of the scene. 
The next type is flying camera. This camera type is better suited for the large scenes because it allows the camera to fly freely. Ok, let's select and test it. As you can see we can move this camera just the way we want. We can move forward, backwards or we can strafe with it and we can rotate it in any direction we want. However, this camera doesn't have a center, it doesn't rotate around it. So basically it is just a first person camera. And the next type of camera is no controls. What it means, it won't be affected by any of your actions. This camera is better suited for the situations when your camera will be controlled with animations or with the code. Ok, moving on. The next necessary steam component is a light source. Verge 3D supports four of the light source types. There are point, sun, spot and hemi. In the options of a light source, you can set it to cast or not to cast shadows and you can set the quality of the shadows. And also there are some specific options, I won't be talking about them right now. Let's talk about the world settings now. If we go to the world tab, we can see the options that Verge 3D supports. First of all, it is the horizon color. With it you basically set the background color. If I change it in Blender and export it, it also changes in Verge 3D. Let me quickly set the camera back to the orbit type. The environment lighting option lets you set the environment lighting and its color. Basically it fills the scene with a white color. It may help when we have only one light source in a scene, just like we have right now, so the shadows won't be that dark. With the energy gauge you can set on how environment lighting will influence your scene. I will set the environment lighting to 0.3 and export it to the Verge 3 d As you can see, the shadows now are not that dark. But in a lot of situations, only one filling color is not enough. You need some kind of environment texture. It is better to use the already pre-baked environment maps, such as studio lights or the existing landscapes. To set the texture as an environment map, we need to go under the texture tab and select here the world option. Let's create a new texture. And now is actually the best time to talk about the types of textures that Verge 3D supports. It supports two types of environment textures, equirectangular and so-called cube maps. The cube map consists of six square images put together, which represent the six axes or the six sides of a cube. Here you can see an example of such picture, such cube map. And yes, as you can see, every square picture is a projection from each axis. For optimization purposes, they are tightly packed, three horizontally and two vertically. In one of the next tutorials, I will tell you more about cube maps and how to actually create them. Ok, let's get back to our tutorial. Let's select this picture, this cube map, as an environment texture. In the texture type, we need to select the environment map. And now as an environment map type, we need to select the image file, not the animated. Also we need to activate both the blends and horizon check marks. And now we see that our cube map actually became an environment texture. You can control the world background visualization in the world background check mark in the viewport settings. If you turn it off, as a background you will see only the standard grey viewport color. Ok, let's turn it back on so we can see our environment texture again. And let's talk about the equirectangular maps. 
First, let's delete our cube map, create new texture slot and set the type to image or movie. Equirectangular maps are probably the most popular maps, so I won't be explaining how they work here. And how to use them to create cube maps, I will tell you in next tutorials. Ok, back to our scene and here in the mapping in coordinates we need to select Equirectangular. And also under the Influence tab we need to select the Blends and Horizon check marks. Well, as you can see, my map doesn't work properly, so for it to work properly we need to go under the World tab and set here the Real Sky check mark. As we see, the texture now works correctly. Let's try exporting, and yes, in VHDD you see the same picture as in a render viewport. Ok, that's all for today. In the next tutorial I will tell you more about environment maps, how to use them, how to bake them, how to bake the cube map from a rectangular map and vice versa, and about the most convenient ways of using the environment textures in your project. Thank you for listening.